Okay, I'm working on a 2005 Neon. Complaint is a check engine light, misfire code. Enter the engine, key, K25. Go to codes. See, I got a 301 cylinder number one misfire. Go to my data display. Let's look at some data. Let's look at some fuel trims things like that and you can see that I got a negative 17 percent long-term fuel trim and a negative five short-term so just something to keep in the back of our minds right now that this thing's running a little bit rich, computer's taking the fuel away, even though we don't have a trouble code for that. Okay, so we'll exit out of here. We'll go to our functional tests. System tests, sorry. And we can look at our misfire counters, and we can look at what's going on. And you can see that it's cylinder number two, Interestingly enough, there we go, there's an indication on number one. Number two showing a little bit too. Not a severe miss sitting here in the car, I can feel a little bit rough. Let's go into the hood now and take a look. Alright, so I got a couple of capacitive pickups on cylinders one and two. I want to look at them on my scope. So again, looking at our spark line, firing lines on the ignition. And if you look close at this one, you're going to see when I snap it, there's a lot, a lot of shortening of this spark line on this cylinder right there was a good capture of it and so that's the bad one let me switch cylinders here so I'm changing my trigger display to do Here's a good cylinder. And that looks great. Now here's the thing. What I didn't tell you yet is I moved the plugs. I switched the number one plug to the number two cylinder. And that crappy pattern moved with the plug, so we got a bad plug. So when I pulled the plug out, it was black. And I, th I said, uh, you know, this car having a recent tune-up. Is it possible that we got a bad plug? And of course it is. But this was the problem initially as well. Runs good for a while, then we get a misfire back. So let's let's think back to our fuel trim for a second. And a misfire with a bad spark plug is not going to give you a negative fuel trim number. So my concern is that maybe this number one fuel injector could be leaking, which made the plug black, fouled it out, messed up my spark lines, and so what I need to do is an injector balance test, and I'm going to do that. I've already adapted a pressure gauge to the fuel rail. I'm going to connect up my gauge to it. It's in series to the rail. Take my ignition leads off.
and I brought out my injector balance tester, little timer tool. You see the settings on it. It's got one pulse, ten pulses, hundred pulses, sorry, fifty pulse in the middle. And that's where I'm set at. So I'm going to unplug these fuel injectors. We're going to do a flow test, balance test. We're going to do them all because we want to make sure that we don't have any other problems with the other injectors. Now I'm going to go back in the car and grab my scan tool, turn the key on. take the scanner what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bi-directional mode also known as uh, functional test a lot of glare on the screen so I'm going to go functional tests and I'm going to go ATM tests and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find my fuel pump and I'm going to hit yes. And then I can turn my fuel pump on and on. So you can watch my pressure gauge. Hit yes. Hit yes again to turn it off. And you see I'm at around 57 PSI of rest pressure. So now I'm going to take my timer tool, plug it into the injector. Problem is, it's the wrong style plug. That's okay. We can be a little creative. we got to be careful with this. We don't want our T-pins touching each other. I'm going to use some T-pins. And uh, I'm going to adapt to this. I need a third hand here. So what this timer tool is going to do is we're going to apply a power and a ground to those two pins on the fuel injector. Alright, so I got my jumper wires in here, being real careful that they don't touch each other. And I got my jumper wires on my timer tool, set on a 50 pulse. I'm going to re-energize my fuel pump again, again using the scan tool. And you'll watch the gauge. See the gauge move, turn the pump off, rest pressure, 57. Press the button on the timer tool. And I'm going to watch my fuel pressure drop. You see we drop down to about 27, 28 PSI from 57. We'll do that one more time. We'll re-energize the fuel pump. 57 is my rest pressure. Hit the timer button again. And we drop down to about 27 PSI. You don't want to do that more than two times without tr cranking the engine over because we'll end up flooding the cylinder out and could hide your lock the motor, that'd be real bad. So I'm going to move to the next injector. Just move my two jumper wires, again being careful they don't touch each other. So I'm now on the number two injector. Repressurize. 57 is my rest pressure. I'm going to hit the button. And we drop to about 34 PSI. One more time. Repressurize. 57, my starting point. To like about 33 PSI. So, confirmed problem here. Number one fuel injector definitely leaking. Fouled out the spark plug. Gave me a bad pattern on the plug. Had I rushed the car, I would have just put a plug in this thing. But looking at the fuel trim numbers being negative 17, that's what put me in this direction. So let's make sure that we have good injectors across the board. That was dropping to 33, 34 on that number two. Number one is the suspect. I'm now on the number three. Repressurize the system. 
hit my timer button. 33, 34 PSI, just like the number two. Unlike the number one, dropping down to 27, about a five or six PSI difference. Repressurize them now on the number four. Repressurize the system. Press the button. 33. So we need a number one fuel injector. That's it. That'll take care of it.